Good afternoon, listeners, and welcome to Frithcast. Good afternoon, Miss Kate. Good afternoon, <laughs> everyone. George, don't do that. <laughs> Yes, welcome to Frithcast, uh, episode 14. 14. It no, doesn't it, work. it doesn't work. It doesn't no. work. 13 plus 1. 13 plus 1. Um, that doesn't work either. Episode 14. Episode 14. Uh, which we are, uh, tonight we are talking about uh, the stuff that we've decided to talk about tonight, uh, which will all become clear in a moment, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> my name is Kate. I am uh, not the host of this uh, program. I'm just having a bit of a bit of a uh, bit of a go at it for variety's sake. No, Kate, we're riled and free. Thank you, thank you. I I am instead a passing druid who happens to stop in and talk about. Well, I mean, I live here. I live here, but you know, I I I, I t- help talk about heathenism. I hope I help. Uh, you do. I I might I might I might you know, uh, go astray a couple of times here and there. Uh, and the same will go for tonight. And I'm joined by the person who is actually the host of Frithcast, which is, or who is? Hello. It's Hello. Suzanne. Hi. Hello, Hello Suzanne. Um, I'm one of the ambassadors for TAC, the Asatru community. The Asatru community. Never community. getting old, I can no. say it. You <laughs> can. <laughs> I've you not can. run out of voice. That is so much better. Uh. So I'm going to ask you a question because... Ask- we start with questions. This is how we learn foo and random things, because it generally starts with a question. Hmm. So today we're going to talk about one of the concepts that is in the runes. Now, the runes are awesome. You've probably heard of uh, at least the Elder Futhark and runic objects, inscriptions. We've talked a little bit about things like the Viking graffiti at Maze Hammer. <clears throat> I've heard about the Elder Futhark. Yes, this is good. There is more than one script, but the elder one tends to be the one people are most familiar with. Okay. So one of the runes in there is... The runes don't just stand for a letter. They also generally have a concept or an idea attached to them. Mm. And it's one of those concepts that I'd like to have a bit of a wander around in this episode. And the rune is the one for joy, wunjo. Joy? If you look at it in the Anglo-Saxon futhark, it tends to be known as win. Okay. W Y N. Joy as in happiness. Joy as in happiness. And glee. And glee. Okay. So I'm going to start with a question of what ties together Anakin Skywalker, Harry Potter, and Marcus Aurelius. Oh, and the minions. Oh, just throw the minions in as well. Because why would you not right, throw minions on. in it? Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. Marcus Aurelius. Oh, yeah. And the Minions. Yep. Because we're going to have a wander around all four of those and a couple of other things besides in this episode. They're all tiny and wear goggles? Not sure you could say that about Marcus Aurelius, but that might be a new look for him. Oh, Anakin Skywalker wore goggles in episode one when he was doing the pod race. He did, yes. Harry Potter... He definitely has glasses. I don't know about goggles. Did he do goggles while he was like taking potion classes and stuff? Because he should have done, really, because that's like... <laughs> yeah, but it's not them being small it's not goggles. goggles. No. Okay, fine. Because goggles and heathenism, I'm not quite sure I could tie together steampunk Vikings, but I'm sure we could probably have a go at it in a future podcast. Bananas! They all like bananas! I don't know. Do you think Marcus Aurelius would ever have had a banana? Where do bananas come from? Why don't I know where? Why don't I know where Caribbean? bananas come from? They come from I know Caribbean. they come from the Caribbean, but I don't know whether they started out there. Were they introduced You're there? Are they native generic there? Generic supermarket. Yeah. Did Marcus Aurelius ever go down run a generic supermarket? I don't know. Hmm. If he did, it probably had the same layout as all the other ones. Yeah, Roman supermarket. Oh. 
Okay, so it's not bananas and it's not goggles. I'm stumped. Uh, okay. Cat, any ideas, cat? No. The, cat, the no. cat has no ideas at no all. No idea about anything so, whatsoever. Well, we're going to talk about this one particular rune, and this has been something that has kind of probably hit me in the last week or so, is this concept of joy and happiness. Oh. For a heathen, yeah, it's a good thing. For most people, joy and happiness isn't all a good thing. But Certainly at face value. Yeah, for me, the heathen version has a couple of caveats on it. Okay. And we'll get round to those somewhere closer to the end. But where I want to start is looking at what joy and happiness is for a heathen. All right. And I'm not going to go down the, the, the stereotypical route of... To shush the noisy, to see yes. them driving home, and to hear the silence of the library. Yeah, no, we're not... That's uh, Silence in libraries is all good, and I quite like it, but that's not where I'm going with. There's these things called the rune poems, and mm. they generally tend to give a verse per rune, and there's an Anglo-Saxon rune poem that surprisingly deals with all the Anglo-Saxon runes, and there's other rune poems that give definitions to each of the other rune sets. Right. Which, for the majority, stay the same. So if you read the Anglo-Saxon poem for joy, it reads, Joy is for the one who knows little of woe. Bonus. Yeah. I can quite go for Makes that. Makes sense. Unhampered by sorrow, he will have bright fruits and bliss and buildings enough. Now, even in that, there's a concept of moderation. There's a concept of living in the moment. There's a concept of having just enough of something, not having an excess of something. Okay. Because that excess will not create joy on its own. Mm. Even the old father, with he cautions in the Havamal about having too much knowledge. Because if you have too much knowledge, you're almost not happy. Yeah. Because you're you're thinking too much on what is to come and how it all connects together. You're not living in the present moment. And this is where the minions come in, because if you've seen a couple of films called Despicable Me and Despicable Me Too... And you have, let's face it. Because I... <laughs> minions, yeah. The minions are... And even if you've not seen the films... You've seen you've probably you've seen, seen the minions because minions, yeah. they've been all oh, for you know for for some for while there they were they were literally all over everything yeah. weren't they Despicable Me three is somewhere due out fairly soon oh it is isn't it I yeah think. so there will be more minions yeah. but the minions are very much they live in the moment they find absolute joy in the simplest things in the moment they don't really show they do show concern about what's ha going to happen in the future but they mostly live in the here and now, in the instant, instant to instant, moment to moment. Mm. They find joy in the things that they do together as a group and that they get up to, but in that particular minute. Yeah. They're very much living <clears throat> joy in that moment. They're not thinking about the future and they're not thinking about the past. They're, they're living not, in the here and now. They're not worrying about what's to come and they're not regretting things that they've done. Or, yes, yeah. or, or anything like that. They're very much living in the here and now. This is presumably, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching, I'm on a limb, but I'm, this is presumably why they appeal to people to the extent they do, because they're just insanely jolly. Yes, they are. Yes, they are childlike and yes, they are puerile, but that's kind of bottom. <laughs> bottom. <laughs> Sorry, you are not. Did I interrupt? <laughs> but that very instant humour is very much that joy of being in that present moment, yeah. of living in that present moment, and that appeals. That does appeal. It's very similar to. Jedi. Okay, now you've lost Being me. in the present. Oh, uh, the the Jedi as the opposed Jedi. to the film. The, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Not like Jedi Minions, because that would be awesome. That would be cool. You'd that have to get them really... so good. You'd have to get them little brown cloaks, little brown robes to can wear. Can you imagine Minions with a lightsaber? Because I can. And that would be hilarious for about the first ten minutes, and they're very messy. <laughs> I was going to say, that would be pretty damn gory, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be so funny. Wow. Yeah, let's not go there. But the Jedi from the Star Wars films are the same. They are very much live in the present moment. Hmm. 
don't live in the past, don't fear the future, let what is be. It's a very yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a discipline that's I guess is common to a lot of philosophies in in, yes, in, in yeah. some respect. I mean, you find it in uh, you find it in the Jedi because it's. I mean, obviously they 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 had their conceptual roots in a lot of the the sort of Eastern traditions, a lot of yes. you know in Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, and so on. I mean, Buddhism is the same. Live moment to moment. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and to some degree, it's something that you find in uh, the. Uh, druid philosophies as well mm. i say philosophies because there are billions of them but um you know a lot of them will have this 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 common understanding that you in order to be a fully engaged fully connected person to the earth you mm. want to be in the here and now in the here and now so this is where marcus aurelius comes in yeah and how he connects to the minions minion jedi indeed awesome <laughs> Roman um, minion Jedi. Roman minion Jedi. This oh, is getting this complicated. Is, this is getting so good. <sighs> if anybody wants to wants to draw us a picture of what a Roman minion Jedi looks like, oh, please do. That would be awesome. I'm just, I'm just imagining legions of them. Little minions, yeah. Just, just marching across Europe, conquering. <laughs> Try. Can you imagine trying to keep them in order? <laughs> I mean, they say it's hard to halt a moving legion, <laughs> but if it's made of minions, <laughs> they just swarm. Bless them. They wouldn't kind of do anything but swarm. I think oh, that'd be fabulous. So Marcus Aurelius, mm. big Roman chappy. If you've yes. not heard about him before, he's a chap that wrote a piece called Meditations. Yes, he actually he was a he was a Roman emperor. Uh, he was considered one of the five good emperors, and while he was campaigning, as Roman emperors had to do, he was he was not a he was not a, a, a particularly militaristic man. But having been brought up a Roman, it was it was there, and you know the emperor did what emperors were expected to do. So he had various campaigning to do, and while he was out at in his sort of tents and things on the uh, on the battle battlefronts, he would write. Uh, essentially what have become books of philosophy um mm. the thoughts of marcus aurelius yes uh, which we now which we now call <clears throat> meditations yeah. yes and in meditations he looks at very much living in the moment but with just enough of something yes he doesn't look at things in excess i mean he is a stoic so he takes it a little bit further than i would what he does and doesn't require to live a balanced what he would understand as a balanced life yeah Joy in the runes for me, this joy, this the rune Wunjo, win, yeah, is about joy and happiness, but it has connotations of other things as well. The the sort of yes, you can be happy, but you can't be happy all the time, else you'll not know what how, you'll not be able to define that from anything else. Okay, so you need to have happiness in balance with other things. And having that sort of keeping that balance of need and want yeah. is a, a particularly where my brain was taking this. And it, the sort of the, the thing, the definition between the things you need and the things you want. Yes, which Stoics, such as Marcus Aurelius, would be very conscious of that difference. Yes, they uh, would only want, they would only strive to have the things they needed rather than all the things they wanted. <clears throat> it, the, um, the 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 chasing after the things that you want is often a uh, is often I, I suppose again I suppose Buddhism would have much to say about the same things. You, mm. If you if you attach yourself to uh, you know you know material luxuries or even people yes. uh, that you think are what you need to make you happy, but in actual fact they are what you want. Yes, you see they again. They might take this in a little bit of a different direction to me personally. Of course. But yeah, there is yeah. that understanding that for Buddhism, attachment is what stops you spiritually progressing. Yeah. For me, I quite like being attached to certain things. Okay. <laughs> I quite, quite like having. But the other side of this rune for me is that the difference between need and want is usually wish. Yeah. So you can need something but you can wish to want something. Okay. And that 
tied up in all of this for me is that art of correct wishing. There are fairy tales that will quite often centre around somebody being given three wishes and making a mistake. Oh, yes. And not getting exactly what they've wished for, but it not being what they actually wanted. So we'll put a couple of links in the description once I've zoomed around the fairy tales a little bit. The fairy tales, certainly the ones that I grew up with, are full of examples of people being given three wishes mm. and having to use the third wish to undo yes. what's happened in the first two because they've not got that art of correct wishing, that yeah. understanding that things are in balance. So this is where, if you kind of sort of sat looking at your listening device going, what are they on about? <laughs> what are they talking about this time around? Because I do not get it. There are a couple of examples from popular culture that, for me, illustrate the art of correct wishing. This joy in moderation, this balance in in happiness, which the runes comes ultimately from the runes. One of those is Harry Potter. OK. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Mm -hmm. First film in that fabulous series harry potter is searching for the philosopher's stone okay but can't find it and the only reason he can find it in the very conclusion of the film spoiler sorry <laughs> i'm kind of hoping you've all seen it by now um and we're not spoiling too much for you because we're <laughs> going to be giving away a couple of spoilers in this episode the only way that he can actually find the philosopher's stone dumbledore has set a, a, a caveat on it that it can only be found by somebody who doesn't want to find it devious very devious yeah so anybody Sensible. actively searching for it can't get their hands on it okay but when harry comes along he doesn't want to find it so he can find it he stands in front of the mirror puts his hand in his pocket and brings it out and there it is and that to me is the art of correct wishing it's that want and need mm. balanced mm. the other example that i can give of fairly spectacular misuse of the art of correct wishing is anakin skywalker from star wars yes yes little annie yeah no a little bit older than that oh we'll talk about the third film we're past the goggles now oh thank god yes we're way past the goggles okay. take the goggles off oh all those Fling. celia imry had goggles on when she was flying that space fighter that was a bit awesome. Celia Imry was flying a space fighter. I just can't. I still, okay. even now, I can't get over it. Okay. Carry Come on. back. Sorry. Great wishing. So Anakin Skywalker in the third film, Revenge of the Sith, does a whole load of soul searching and comes up with the only solution he can think of to protect all the people he loves. Where wanting to protect all of the people that you love in your life is a fairly noble thing and a, a, a good thing to strive for. Oh. He decides that the only method he can do that is by actively turning, going another way, picking up skills that go beyond to try and keep them all safe by the use of power. He has every noble intent. Yes. It's a bit of a kind of a snap turn, but if you can get over that part, yeah, he's... That he, he's got... The noble thought in his head, he just doesn't have the art of correct wishing. By every... Yeah, I mean, by every, by every measure... Uh, every ethical measure that I think you and I share and perhaps a lot of people that are, you know, uh, mm. a lot of people that might be listening to this will share. If I say to you, this person wants to protect their family and the people they care for, mm. we can all relate to that. I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm all good with that. There's, yes. there's nobody is going to is going to point at that trait on its own or that 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 uh, that feeling, that desire on its own and say that is a dark thing. Yes, because. Jedi minions are definitely not a dark thing. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> but Anakin Skywalker uses the application of force and over does it. So he gets exactly what he wishes for. Yeah. He gets the power, but it destroys the connection to everything that he was working to protect. Yeah. Everything. Because because it does. Because it does. Uh, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Yeah. Dragon sickness. Yes. He gets the dragon. I mean, there is another rune called Need, which is about that obsession, yeah. unhealthy obsession, okay. dragon sickness. 
uh, as you would call it, as Tolkien's dwarves called it, the dragon sickness. Mm. The concepts of balance and moderation don't just come through this one of the art of correct wishing and joy and happiness. Mm. You know, it it comes across in all things. If you have a treat every day, it doesn't become a treat. It becomes that's, a normal pattern of behaviour. That's true. If you have a treat once a week, you're likely to value it a lot more because it's in balance. Yeah. So these are some of the things that have been zooming around in my head in the last, I don't know, last week or so? Yeah. Is suddenly going from Minions to Jedi to Anakin Skywalker to Marcus Aurelius to Harry Potter and looking at the art of correct wishing hmm. and happiness in, in balance, in moderation. Moderation. Of things. Awareness, awareness of the difference between what you want and what you need. Yes. And living in the present moment. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there's a way of taking a little dash of Buddhism and trying to live in the present moment. Yeah. Which is then connected with this obtaining happiness, but not through material wealth, but also this art of correct wishing, keeping things in balance, in moderation, keeping material possessions in balance, keeping knowledge in balance, mm. not spending too much time and focus on one particular aspect to the detriment of all others. Yeah. Don't fixate. Don't fixate. It's... And it's right there in the rooms. Don't fixate. As, as are so many things. Oh, God, yes. So, cross fingers in some of the future episodes will dip into the runes again yeah. because they're not just used for inscriptions. Yeah. And it might be that this will come up again. Oh, yeah. God, yes, I hope so because my brain's sparking off on little Jedi minions are bouncing around in my head now. You need to go right, I think. <laughs> Get rid of them for a month. Go do yourself a Star Wars <laughs> Despicable Me fanfic. Oh, would that not be such an awesome Set in thing. Roman times. Oh. oh, I'll just, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. Um, so we might have given you a whole different episode this time around. Mm -hmm. A little bit of something different. It's certainly a, a concept that's been bouncing around in my head. And once you see one connection in popular culture, you start looking at other aspects and suddenly realising that this concept of moderation and the art of correct wishing, mm. I can put that onto a lot of things. Mm. Everything from fairy tales to Star Wars to Harry Potter has this balance and moderation, power in moderation, knowledge in moderation. So it's certainly something I've been thinking about quite a lot in the last few weeks. So I hope today has been a bit of a different thing. Yeah. So we'll probably leave it there for today. Indeed. So if you want to find us online, I'm Suzanne. You can find me on Facebook under Suzanne Martin, on Twitter at Suzanne Tack. Come and say hi, throw me a friend request. It's all good and groovy. If not, you can find me through the Asatru community. Yep. And I'm bouncing around in some of the groups in there as well. Indeed. Yes. Um, and if you want to find me, I have a website. I've got a website. Well, I that sounds a bit grand, say I've got a website. I've got a bit of a blog. It's basically just to keep some links on so I don't have to go through all the places that I've... Cra basically, right, go to glassrain.net and all one word, apart from the .net, obviously, and I'm there, <laughs> basically. Okay. And that links to my Facebook and my Twitter <laughs> and my Google Plus and there's a couple of posts on there. There'll be more, hopefully, by the time you listen to this. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Maybe a few. So there you are. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. It said just says because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. What does that, I'm not sure what that means anyway. Uh, like you have the sky to reach for, I guess. Oh, I see. Might seem cra That's might it. seem crazy what I'm about to say. Do 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 do. Sunshine, she's here. You can take a break. Do 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 do. I'm a I'm not. How do you sing that bit? I'm a hot air balloon that can go to space with the air like I don't care, baby. With the by the air way. like I don't care, baby. By, by the way, way, I don't know how to. I've just changed the key. Let's go back to your key. Where was your key? Oh, I don't know. Down the back of the sofa, probably. <laughs>
anyway, it's, it's, it's about... I can do the clapping along. So you can. That's easy. Because I'm like a seal. happy. Arr, 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 arr. Clap along if you feel, feel like, like a room without, without a roof. Do, do, do. Clap, Clap along if you feel like, like happiness is the truth. Do, do. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Do, do. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. And so on. Here come bad news, talking this and that. Da, 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 da. I can't do it. Can't Give me sing. all you got, don't hold back. I can't sing. Dun, dun, dun. Do, 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 do. Well, I should probably warn you, I'll be just fine. Do, 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 do. I'll just do the do, do, do's. Okay. I can do the do, do, do's. No offense do to you, that. don't waste your time. Here's, Here's why. why. Because I'm happy. <laughs> you need you need musical accompaniment, really. You just do. Well, just fade that out. It'll be fine. Anyway, that's copyright material. Yeah. We'll get into trouble for that absolutely fabulously faithful uh, cover we've just done. Banana. Banana. <laughs> Babble. Uh, Bye-bye. Yeah. And that. I wonder what happens if you do this.